Ooh, nice skelly dota right there. Holy value. Wait, he's not done yet. Wait a sec. <laughs> oh my goodness. The playoffs for the Nepal Cup are underway. We had 16 teams advance into the playoffs. And there's a lot of big name teams, but we have a big matchup right of the gate here between Clash Champs and United Gaming GS. Now, in a tragic turn of events there, we didn't get to see United Gaming GS play in the World Championship Qualifier. I guess they weren't able to pass the document checks there to be able to get into the top 128. So we didn't get to see them play over the last, last weekend to go have a chance to go into Worlds. But maybe we can see them make up for it with taking a win over Clash Champs today and showing that they deserve to be there even if they weren't able to get there you know <laughs> it's kind of sad but let's see what p caster could do in response to start off here and see if he can set the bar high here for united gaming to meet but it looks like is it to be a world champion for the right side of the base there gets the cc pull the queen going after the eagle artillery right now gets a wall break to get the queen to transition forward their king's on the outside of the base there the queen will fight the cc and the sweeper keeping the healers nice and safe. There are a couple archers onto the healers right now. I need to go deal with that. But the king goes to the outside. And we'll get the funnel form to get the queen to turn back over to the eagle artillery, hopefully. But I feel like it needs a little bit more onto that battle builder specifically in the outside of the base there. But the queen, gonna go over there and pick it up there. She should turn back to the eagle artillery. The king's doing a good. Alrighty then. All right, P. Castro will send a blimp in to go pick up the town hall there. That does arrive successfully. The queen is off track. But she does have the extra push to get him over to the model. And actually, you know what? You know what? That's actually going to work out here because she helps get the model down. And now she can pick up the egg artillery. And the warden ends up following her. She's going to be stuck in trash. The blooms have to finish off the defenses. But there's not many defenses left here. He's got to push up the air defense. He's got the skeleton spell locking down the last expo on the base and what was i worried about he's got two freezes he's got extra visibility p castro such a powerful lead off attacker and he delivers again and again for class champs and by the way if you didn't hear class champs had a lot of very high score wars and they were able to advance into the next stage of the world championship qualify so they're in the top 32 and they are definitely one of the front runners of the competition in my opinion i would be very shocked if they don't make it to worlds they are definitely at the top of the game right now stadra in for united gaming gs's open attack here's gonna be a queen charge and twin hog he's got a battle jewel selected a moment here and we'll see what he does with it a lot of people like to open up these queen charge hog attacks or with the yeti blimp so we need to make sure that he can get the path thing set here and make sure that he can keep the damage reduced to a minimum on the queen here so she can actually sustain. But he does go ahead and use an invisibility early on as his funneling point there. And he'll start to push his way forward. But got an archer on his left fl or right flank there. He'll step over there and take it. Throw it in a Valkyrie and a blue. Why didn't he just do that initially? Why do that after burning the invisibility? Like if you're going to invest it, just invest it, you know? Freezes the bolt in front of the expo. That also takes the damage off of this balloon. Balloon is trying to get this archer tower down, but it looks like he's gonna use the battle drill the same as we used the blimp there. You know that that's that's what I expected. That's what I expected. I just was expecting it to be a blimp, but the battle drill does the same function. It's able to dive in, it's able to take out the abilities that are gonna pull the CC and protect the Queen's flank there, getting the defenses that she can't reach so that she can march safely forward towards the town hall in this case. But another expo on the side of the town hall. Pick it up. The eagle artillery firing down to the king. King keeping it distracted there. No poison for the lava pups here. But he gets a minion down. The queen working her way through it. One minion just trying to clean it up as quickly as he can. But the queen is able to... Or the queen was distracted for quite a long time. I don't think she can reach that multi-inferno over the wall. So she'll circle around. She'll eventually work her way back to it. The queen's not really going to be under a lot of damage for a long time here. But he does get the hogs moving in from the right side of the base here. And he needs to beat the clock right now. That was a very, very long setup. And so he's got a long way to go. But he gets the headhunters down onto the defensive king. Poison lizard assisting right there as well. But he needs to move forward. He's got grass skullies popping forward here into the monolith. And he will have the poison lizard help get those cleaned up as well. Always the biggest advantage of using the poison lizard. Especially in these ground attacks. Where you have everything jumping over or going under walls. 
Looks like the Queen's stepping over to the Expo there. She still has her ability. I don't think he needs to put any more spells into the Queen. Not that he has any spells to be able to put into her even if he wanted to, but he does get to her champion for base there. She steps her way forward, pops her ability, but it is looking like she might turn north here. But the Queen goes down before he gets the multi down, and the Roar Champion gets shut down by the Rage Up Expo. It's a defense. It was looking really good there for a little bit, but the Hogs and the Queen and the Roar Champion all go down as soon as that Rage Tower goes off there and it stops. It looks like an 84%. So class champs are going to start off this elimination match, by the way. The playoffs for the Nepal Cup are single elimination, so there are no second chances. You have to win every single war. Lead established for class champs. Now we'll see if they can sustain. It is going to be a Lizard? Yeti Palm? Nothing? Nothing? That's not what I expected! Oh, uh, no! Well, that's a problem. <laughs> All right, well, I don't know what was in there. Whatever it was died rather quickly. I didn't see anything come out. I didn't see anything come out. The scatter shot must have took a shot before he got into the invisibility. But that's a bit of a problem here for class champs as they may end up giving up their lead there based on just that alone. But he will go ahead and put in a wizard of the key or a wizard and the world champion for the right side of the base there dive after the scatter shot that was I assume supposed to go down right there. Try to gather up as much percentage as he can. He needs to get the CC dealt with here. We'll get stalled up by it. Lava Hound. Headhunters. Quickly locks out of this king there. The king's under Phoenix, so the provide some support there for the queen for a little bit, but the headers are turned to the queen there. She does tag him out there, and he was able to get the CC very quickly dealt with there. All right, that works. He's going to go ahead and use that invisibility of the queen. The phoenix ends up absor absorbing a bunch of traps, and now the question is, can he get to the town hall and get it activated? Because it's not activated yet, so he needs to gather more percentage before he can even dive into it. He's got four freezes. He's got two haste. He definitely has the spell support to make this work. But he goes ahead and starts to Lalo over on the Eagle Artillery side. And that does make sense in this situation. But he needs to start it on both sides here. And he does. So Town Hall did just activate there. So he's going to stop working on the Eagle Artillery side of the base there. Other than the small commit that he put into it already. And maybe get the Eagle Artillery down to save all of his cleanup. And also he's getting a lot of trash cleared up in that quarter there. You can definitely tell that he's not going for the three star right now. He's trying to salvage percentage. And trying to make sure that he at a minimum ends up with the two star. And he does lock it in right there. Min typically the Eagle Artillery. But maybe once a little bit more on that. He could go in with the top quarter here. That's a that's the smart choice in this situation. You do not want to attack high damage areas when you're in a spot like this. You want to make sure you attack the lowest damage areas that have the most trash that can be picked up there. And that top quarter is a hands down the correct choice there for this situation. But he will get it up in the 70s here. Looks like the Eagle Artiller gonna take a strike at the warden here. He's got a couple of sneaky goblins. He can pick up a collector, collector, collector on the far right side. Get all three of those collectors down, and he will. And he could try to tank for the warden to get a little bit further here. But he does get the Eagle Artillery down, but the Eagle Artillery strike was already in the air. The warden goes down. All right, he does get in the 80s. It actually climbed a lot higher than I expected it to. So, GG to Padalino because he recovered that very nicely. And he still gets it almost up to the percentage this Dodger had. So, looks like it is a two-building split if we see a triple out of United Gaming GS. So, Class Champs have the potential to fall behind right now if we can see a triple from GS. Okay, here's that blimp back again. Scatter shot fired there. Hit the balloons. He dropped right there. I saw that big explosion. What was the big explosion? Okay, well. Let's see what Morio can do now. We'll have to watch that one back again and see what happened with it because that was kind of weird. Was the blimp empty? Oh, the explosion was the... the. Oh, you're right. Your Kira's uh, from Tribe says the explosion that we saw there was the crash damage of the blimp itself. So I don't know what... I have to watch back at the end of that attack there and see exactly what was inside the blimp there because something's weird about what we just saw. I don't know. <laughs> But Morio gonna be diving in now with this queen going at the town hall. It's gonna be a dragon rider attack. I've seen a lot of dragon riders lately, but he 
Is it get the queen to go in and get the monolith down? Good protection for the queen. Queen was invisible, and the eagle artillery strike went to that balloon there. I think it didn't go to the healers there. That would have been really bad, but the queen does get off of the ice golem, gets the monolith finished off there, and then she chases the ice golem down, goes to the sweeper now, and I guess she'll support on the inside of the base there. She's able to remove a full quadrant, taking some red air bombs to the healers, though. That's a little bit of a problem. Slammer from the left side of the base here, goes after the air defense. And Dragon Runner is going to just get cut off and forced into the middle of the base there by the Slammers. So that's a really good pathing for them. But you know, unfortunately, did not go north. I was hoping she'd go north there and stay all the way up to the top side to go out to the back side of the air defense and multi inferno. But she's going to loop all the way around the base here. Maybe she can support the other side because the cleanup is getting cleared rather quickly here. So she could still come back in and give the support into the top side here and actually end up clean up at the end here. So we'll keep a close eye on her as she wraps her way through. But defensive queen right there, picking off some of these dragon riders. Loses the, well, it loses all of them. Not just the bulk of them, lost all of them right there. The queen, I think she's to the inside. No, she goes to the outside. That's actually a really good sign right there, but. <coughs> Excuse me. I feel like it's gonna be a time fail. I think uh, he was choking just like I am right now. <laughs> um. But looks like he's going to get the percentage up here to the 80s. The Queen will be able to pop her building a little bit more there. More ground scale. These giant bombs going off there. The Queen's going to get overwhelmed. Here's where that expo picks back up. And it is going to be, it looks like, an 81% as he runs out of time before she even goes down. So it is going to be a lead sustain for class champs. Looks like it was scattershot. It was right there. Did it fire? I don't see a firing right there. It didn't fire. There's the... Oh, there's a shot. There's a shot. <laughs> yep. Yep. All right. There it is. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, that, that settles it. That, that settles it. I can think we can safely say that there was troops in there and it was super wizards. No reason to go look at the end of the attack there. Probably uh, five goblins and four super wizards. You can go back and look at the end of the attack there from when it was live. Otherwise, let's move on. We got Selenio. Coming in for class champs with the lead. At least sustained there. Morio now on defense. Is it to be a super drag attack here? Recall super dragons. Charging the queen directly at the model. Would have been a good spot for a skeleton spell, I feel like, but he's okay here. But he'll step his way in and get the model down before he switches over the king. That's good. He gets the king out of the way here, then he stops the super dragons from getting caught on him. But how far does he want to push the queen? Does he want to push the queen all the way into the town hall takedown or recall her out now? He pops her ability. He is going for the further charge, but lots of ground skellies right here. I'm gonna stall him up. Luckily, his archers clear a lot of the ground skellies and get him back in action. For, goes invisible. Okay. This is a very heavy charge here for a recall charge, but he does pull out now and he's not gonna continue on to the town hall, but he will have established a pretty decent funnel. Did use a lot of resources on that, though. Here comes Super Dragons. Trust Selenio's judgment a lot here. But I... Don't know how far the Super Dragons are going to go. He's going to go into the middle of the base here, engage the CC now. He was able to take the CC pole with only air troops there. So just a couple of archers came out. I saw about five of them come out. So I anticipate a triple ice golem still inside of the CC. But he does get the town down, stuck with poison, taking the artillery strikes there. Dragon's getting melted on the right side, able to get through the town hall and the CC. Warden is gonna keep on moving for a little bit longer, but he wastes most of his Phoenix while he's traveling to go follow the remaining Super Dragons. They get the Eagle Artillery taken care of, and we do get a split off over to the Defensive World Champion. He doesn't have to get her down, though. That would be a very, very high-value target if he gets her. But he does leave her up. And he leaves up the Inferno right there as well. But he, he cleared a lot of traps there. So he'll try to keep on pushing the Queen. He's got the World Champion still. But he can't really do a lot with the World Champion until the defensive World Champion's out of the way. He's got one freeze. He potentially could get through here at the freeze. But I feel like he needs to get the next thing moving here. Otherwise, in a time fill at a uh, bare minimum. But he starts with the World Champion at the very bottom base here. He's just going to have to risk it. He's going to have to get the cleanup moving opposite of where the Queen is moving. And just get this World Champion through this World Champion on defense with that freeze. It doesn't really... He's not really left with any other options right now. But the Queen able to get the job done up top there. She gets through the scatter shot. She's kind of home free from there. But time's ticking away fast. I don't think he finishes in time. I don't think there's enough damage output 
with another 20 buildings between his world champion and the queen. So it is going to be a, a time fail at a bare minimum as his queen would eventually take it all down. So Class Champs has a two building advantage if United Gaming GS can get the triple here. So still a very, very close war, but a lot of pressure now ramping for United Gaming as we drop in the super minion bomb. Able to secure the tile takedown. Grab out the Monarch. There's the Tornado Trap. Pull him forward. Okay. He's uh, able to dodge it with some of the Super Minions there, but bulk of them died to the Tornado Trap. And now we'll see if that's enough value. Would have been nice to pick up the Bolt Inferno, but I think he got all of his primary targets, and he got at least a partial CC pull here. I remember it was an uh, all-air drop right there out of the blimp there with just the Super Minions and the clones. So we could still have... Some kind of ground troops still inside of the CC here. And he to handle it with his heroes. But he put the Skeletal Spell down on the Defensive World Champion. Reserve his HP. Down comes the Headhunter to get him through the Defensive World Champion a little bit quicker. And unfortunately, his Electro Titan wandered off there. That Electro Titan did not follow the main pack. And instead, ended up diving right into danger. So he doesn't have any ground scale uh, clearing here with that. And so that's going to slow him down a little bit there. But... Does have the Poison Lizard, so he's able to make up for that. The Queen does go to building the outside of the base. There needs some Super Parbs out here to pick up the tanking very, very quickly. Boy, this Queen's going to be in a lot of danger. He does start dropping him now. The World Champion steps in and gets multi inferno down. The King ends up crossing the funnel there. He goes into the Town Hall compartment, and he's completely away from the Queen of the World Champion right now. So he really needs more support for the Queen and the World Champion to make sure that they survive. The World Champion needs... The bulk of the support here because she's the one taking damage right now. He's got the freezes. He's got the invisibility. The king does cross through the core of the base here with the ward of support. He gets the expo down. But the defensive queen is the biggest threat left on the base here. He's going to start to swarm in that area now. Watch all these archers right here. The archers distracting the queen here. Wall breaking through. The wall breaker doesn't get the queen access. Not that she needs access. She can walk right around. The king gets all the way to the scatter shot. But the super barbs are going to distract the warden off of the scatter shot right there so he switches target but he's going back to it headhunters and the super barbs draw his attention forward the queen steps around he's got it with a swag freeze and a couple of super barbs as well so he's got it he's got the freeze and the invisibility left over at the end he'll go ahead and use them now and it is a triple and it is still unfortunately a lead for class champs but GS is now hot of the tail, two buildings behind. Rikiris from Tribe Gaming says we need less HP for Super Barbs and more housing space. And he thinks that they should be nerfed. I'm curious what uh, the YouTube comment section has to say about that. Do you guys think that uh, Super Barbarians are too strong right now? Do you think they need a nerf? Or do you think that they should just chill and do whatever they're doing right now? I don't know. I'm kind of torn. I, I feel like... I feel like I could see it go either way there, and I kind of like them. I, I do, but it is going to be a Skelly Bat Donut here for Leo. Don't go after the Multi Inferno and the CC. Get them both down. Flame Fleeker down south here with no threats to it. Is it to keep on moving? Get a couple of Ground Expo Mortar up ahead here that he might have to deal with in a little bit. But he does go ahead and pick up an Archer on the left side of the base there. Able to get the Collector next to it down as well. Getting the puddle form there. The King has a puddle to go directly into this Inferno. It is a single Inferno, so a Skeleton spell would do wonders right there to keep the King safe. He's got a Skeleton spell, so I imagine that's what he's use it for. Maybe. Yep. Get a spawner right before the King goes in. Prevent the King from getting targeted. That's a good way to disable that. Otherwise, you'd want to use a Freeze if it was a Multi-Inferno. Well, he's able to get the defensive road champion locked on to. Pops his ability. He's getting burned by the single, but he's got the Phoenix there. He will finish the compartment. Unfortunately, he wastes a lot of his range there. But the Barbarian stayed rage for a little bit there. He's still able to get the compartment cleared. But he loses his rage there the moment he dies and goes to Phoenix. So maybe you want to pop that ability a little bit earlier next time. But he does get the road champion to go into the scatter shot there right between the Queen and the King. Queen takes the Town Hall takedown. And the Roar Champion takes us the other, or takes us the one scatter shot onto that side of the base there. So he's got another scatter shot down south here. Watch that flame flinger. As it's gonna open up now, it's like a couple of Yetis gonna pop out. They're gonna miss the Eagle Artillery potentially. Rock Pool search for it. The Yeti's gonna make its way forward because the walls are open. So if he does actually get the access he's looking for, the Yetis 
Actually, that other wall from the left there opened up right after, I think, the Yetis released and started going to the scatter shot there. But they actually, the Yeti might throw the scatter shot and he's able to almost take it down. All right. I see the diggy that was on the ground there following the ward is targeted. He puts in a dragon right in front of the backside of the base there. The dragon is going to go in there and finish off the scatter shot. And he's actually got a complete under control here, guys. There's no doubt that he's going to end up pulling through with the triple ball this way. He's got plenty of time. He's got an extra freeze. That was very nice. He got perfect value out of the heroes. He got solid value out of the flame flinger. He got the support to get the eagle artillery down with that flame flinger, which is huge. And he made so that the balloons didn't have to go to the bottom corner. They could cut across the middle and then just meet up with the dragon on the backside. Easy day there. Class champs will sustain their lead. And once again, put the pressure over to GS. If you ask Darian for his opinion on the balance of the Super Barbarians, then he would tell you that it is the bases that are allowing the Super Barbarians to go through. But a lot of people contest that, and we see Super Barbarians in for Ryuta, and we'll see what he can do here. Ooh, nice Skelly Dota right there. Holy value. Wait, he's not done yet. Wait a sec. <laughs> oh my goodness. Where have we seen this base before? Oh my gosh, he's gonna take out everything. Gets the CC, steps his way into the Eagle, and he gets some damage on but he can't take it down. That was an enormous amount of value right there for the Skelly Donut. Able to take out all six, I might count that right there, six, no, seven targets. I think that is the same base that we saw uh, we saw Synthe set the world record with for that Skelly Donut, and he decided to break it out again. Ryuta spotted that it was that same phase, and he takes 1,000% advantage of it. You know what? We'll, we'll, uh, we'll say that uh, that's a burp base right there if I've ever seen one. <laughs> I thought he would have retired that one after we saw Seligno do his craziness to it. But Ryuta just uh, duplicates it, and obviously it still works. He's able to now push in with the skeleton spell, locking down the model right now. And Super Barbs should have no problem. I don't even think this is the attack that uh, Synthe used when he did that craziness. I think he did something completely different, but... Or maybe he did. Maybe it was the same attack. No, I, no, maybe it is the same attack. I don't even know. But either way, Super Barbs are going to have no problem clear out the backside of the base here with uh, all the heroes still alive and so much value claim, no poison necessary. And he, I don't even, did he even bring a poison? I don't even think he brought a poison. I think he recognized how much value he was able to claim right there and just took it. Now, I think that if Padalino was going to run this base again, what he should have done is trapped that Skelly Donut and put the Tessa farm in that area so that it could fill in the gap and maybe kill the skeletons and stop the value. Although four targets alone would have been sufficient value, but it is absolutely crushed. Ryuta with the match of the world record on the Skelly Donut value. Yeah, I think this is the same way the Synthe did it. Just use the balloons with the Warden and the Blimp to go secure the Town Hall. Here's that Skelly Donut again here. What is it? One, two Expos, two Scatter Shots, and then they come off of those targets and then actually watch how the skeletons like regroup here onto the Grand Warden and then go to the Rage Tower and then the other ones all claps in onto the onto the CC so we doesn't have to fight that as well. So six high value targets out of the Skelly Donut and it is, I do highly believe this is the same base that we saw Synthe do this exact attack on. So he just replicated it. But uh, I think uh, Synthe still gets credit for being the GOAT to spot that in the first place there and then uh ryuda just had to go in and replicate it and that does put his team within two buildings remember this is single elimination here so if they don't survive this round they are out of the competition and by the way the team that wins here has to face either navi or early attacks there in the next round previously chasmac ea before they just uh, dropped their sponsorship and changed teams so no matter who wins here, we have a very, very big war for the quarterfinals. Well, it looks like this one's going to be a Skelly Donut into Mass Twin Hogs. Going after the CC and the multi inferter there. And also going with the Flame Flinger to go after the Eagle Artillery. The Eagle Artillery down is always high value here. It makes so that you can push your heroes to the Town Hall and not have to worry about taking Eagle Artillery strikes the whole time. The Town Hall is very, very exposed in the space. 
Not so exposed that he could get to it. Uh, maybe he could get to it relatively easy with Sneaky Gabas. I feel like Sneaky Gabas would be the right call in this base here. I'm kind of torn when I see all these bases with like the town hall on the edge of the base like that because Sneaky Gabas get to it so easily. Then again, it does tie up a super true. I, I personally would just, when I see that, I build my entire strategy around making sure that I can have Sneaky Goblins to go secure the Town Hall, and then I do something with that setup. But the Queen's making her way towards Town Hall now. She'll probably be able to pop her building at the Monolith down as well. Town Hall activates. Queen pops her building now. Steps her way to the Monolith. We'll take it. Okay, easy day. Flame Flinger is able to get the Eagle Artillery down. Opens up, picks up an extra air defense and mortar up top. All right, now he's got the Hogs. Base left here. Rage Tower was triggered early. That's significant. So he's not going to have to deal with extra Rage Tower damage as he goes through the high damage area. But he waits for it to fade a little bit longer. And then he sends in. So by the time he gets there, should be subsided. But he will Rage up. Pop forward abilities. Goes over the Bomb Tower into the high damage area. Raging up his Hogs rather than healing them. Usually that's the way to go when you have the Ward Ability active. So you want to make sure that you boost the speed that they're able to clear then freeze as soon as you come out of the portable freeze again and he's looking very good here but he still has a defensive queen up ahead here needs to get through her he's got no headhunters that i can see here to go deal with her and all the hogs but a lot of them are getting picked off of their hogs and dropped onto foot there so the champion trying to stay safe 30 seconds has to close this has to Get the triple if he wants to guarantee the win, but he's not looking too bad here. He's got RC ability still intact there. Gets the freeze on the defensive queen. Able to get the lock on. Another invisibility comes down, and he's looking okay here. He's got to beat the clock. 20 seconds to go. This is actually going to come out relatively close here. RC pops her ability. She's under some heavy damage here. Makes it to the backside. RC's going to go down. That's going to cost him time. Guys, he's not going to make it. Loop is going to fall short. He's got a mob of troops still moving, but he's not going to have enough. And that means that this elimination match comes down to the final attack. And this war is in the hands of Ogiari. That miss makes so that United Gaming GS is three buildings ahead if they triple. That puts the threshold, not just a triple, but only a 98 only. A 98% two star, 97% two star is the tie. So a lot of pressure here for Ogiari. It looks like he's diving in with a blizzard. <laughs> yeah, it is. Okay, he's dropping into blizzard. You don't see blizzard anymore, but he's going to put the whole war on the line to see if this can work. Drops in the super wizards. And it looks like he's getting a lot of value out of it. Oh, that's a smart call right there. Blizzard returning to the meta and wrecks that base. And that could give him a chance to win this war. Able to take out that part of the CC as well. Get some ground skellies. Yeah, get the ground skellies out of the way there. One more shot into the CC. No, he takes it to the storage there. Okay. He's got the CC pulled though. He's got the poison still. He can poison up the super beans. Definitely should. He's fighting off the remainder of... Is that offensive lava pups? There's one more lava hound after that. He's got a golem on standby right now. I imagine the golem needs to go in to go support the queen to go towards the town hall. The king was taking all the defenses in advance, so the golem wasn't needed to be used right away, but he does end up losing his baby dragon that was forward of the funnel there. He does drop in a couple of extra blues to correct the pathing. But, I mean, after that uh, blizzard value, it's kind of hard to think that this would miss at that point there. So, he's in a very good spot. He still has the warden ability. He's got a full Lalo army. There's not much base left, but he's going to keep pushing the queen towards the town hall. And she has her ability attack there. She should be able to step in. She should be able to pop her ability and take the town hall down. He goes to almost auto ability right there, but he does take the town hall down. Or ability protects him through the multi-inferno. Gets the defensive queen out of the way there with the headhunters. And then cross to the top of the base here. Guys, this whole war, this whole season, the Nepal Cup... Round of 16 comes down to whether he can survive through this multi-inferno. He's swarming it right now. He's got the freezes. He's got to get through it. He's got a lot of balloons in the area there. They step their way in, and he gets the lock on, and the freezes lock it down. No contest. It is a triple, and that means that United Gaming GS, while they were not able to continue their journey in the World Championship Qualifier, 
because they weren't able to provide their passports, which is really unfortunate. They do take down one of the front runners in the competition, and they take down and eliminate class champs today. So the next opponent is either going to be, like we said, the prior Chasmac EA, which has now changed their name to Early Attacks there, or Navi. So the upper section of the bracket is now advancing, and United Gaming GS survives.